service mode and Marshall Coach Loxley, and then we'll take your guys' questions. Sure. Again, thanks for uh, you guys joining us today. Um, just a quick review of the, the Minnesota game. Obviously, uh, you know, when, as a head coach, you have a two-week opportunity to prepare uh, for a team like Minnesota and to go out and not execute uh, to the level in which we needed to execute to uh, give ourselves a chance to win. Um, when you watch the tape, it's disappointing because I really feel as though we put in a couple of uh, good weeks of practice and. You know, as you watch the tape and evaluate it, as we did uh, pretty intently, you know, uh, with our team, you know, we're one or two plays away in that game from uh, from having what we want at the end of it. You know, you think back to the block field goal with a chance to scoop and score, uh, to tie the game. Uh, you think of the you know fourth and one drop. You think of the third and longs that they were able to uh, get off the field on and. You know, I always felt we were one play away in that game. And then obviously, you know, for them to have the ability to run the football, that to me was probably the biggest disappointment because we know going into the game that that's the strength of what they do. And as we game plan offensively, defensively, and special teams, our jobs as coaches are to find ways to, as we like to say, make them play left-handed. And you know, I didn't feel like we did that. On the defensive side, I did see some improvements on our special teams with the cover units. Uh, whether it be the punt team, uh, the field goal block, keeping points off the board. And then when you look at the film, you know, I thought our quarterback actually played probably the best game he's played since prior to the start of kind of uh, hit him hitting a rough patch there in the Iowa game. And so I'm encouraged as we get ready for Indiana that when you look at the tape, if you can just find a way to correct the one mistake here on each play. And unfortunately, football is one of those sports that if one guy makes a mistake, it uh, – it can be magnified. And so our jobs as the coaches, as I said, is to teach and demand. And our players' jobs are to prepare and perform. And I feel good about the, the energy. The one thing I do coming out of that game is that the effort is still there. I mean, these guys continue to play hard, uh, play into the fourth quarter. You know, one of our pillars is to win the fourth quarter. And, you know, I never, I haven't seen these guys quit. And so that, to me, encourages me every week we come in. And I, I like the way we started out yesterday, you know, being able to, having accountability for the game, um, coaches and players uh, alike, you know, as we dissected it. And, and I saw guys take accountability for their actions just like we do as coaches, and that's encouraging. Um, on some good news, obviously, Indiana is coming in, homecoming. Homecoming is a, a great opportunity. Um, you know, football creates a brotherhood that transcends through generations, and we have an opportunity for some of our former players to come back and some of our former students here to come back and homecoming is for them. You know, for us, we're the show and it's our job to, as I always say, go out and put a, a product on the field that these people coming back here to campus can be proud of. And um, I expect us to do that. You know, Indiana's a tough team. They're one of those teams that has really been uh, built the right way. You know, their coach, I got a ton of respect for Tom Allen. I've known him for quite some time now and, and have competed against his teams and they're always you know, hard fought games, whether he was at South Florida until when he went to Indiana as a coordinator to him taking over. Um, if you just sit back and look at a team's record, I don't always think it tells the story. And I think their record is just that. I mean, they're dealing with some injuries, which we know well, all too well, um, at some key positions that, that may contribute. They played four or five top 20 teams. So again, um, they're a good team and they're great. It's a great opportunity for us to be back here in the shell. Um, you know, hopefully we'll have a great crowd because of homecoming. Uh, we are honoring our 2001 uh, ACC championship team, which I was a part of. And, you know, as I told our team yesterday, you know, it's uh, kind of ironic that this 01 team is being honored because I was part of the build of that from 97 to 2000. And if you recall that era, you know, the first couple of years were two or three win teams. And then we started, a, we had a five and six and we finished with a five and six record. Uh, and, and at one point we were five and two and we lost every game from there. And one thing that stood out to me uh, when that coaching ship search took place for a guy that I call a great mentor, Coach Friesen, I can remember uh, EJ Henderson and, or Denard Wilson and Aaron Thompson standing up because I was part of the transition team, uh, having been kept on. And I remember them saying, Coach, how are you gonna help us win? And one of the first things he said, and it's kind of become a mantra of mine that Coach Friesen said to the team was, you know, I'm not going to teach you how to win. I'm going to teach you how not to lose, how not to beat yourself. And uh, from that day on, I've kind of carried that as my 
mantra as a coach is good teams don't beat themselves. And I learned that from Coach Friesen, who will also be honoring here this Saturday um, for his Bobby Dodd National Coach of the Year uh, reunion. And then a great player who I had a chance to be a part of the recruiting process, you know, EJ Henderson being recognized for his Hall of Fame induction into the College Football Hall of Fame. So a big weekend for Turk football. And I think, or what I hope is that, you know, for our team, that we do all the necessary things that we have to do to prepare and then go out and perform. And then we as coaches do a great job of teaching this week and demanding that they go out and put their best foot forward because there is a lineage of great players that have come through this program that deserve it. And having watched what happened in that transition from the 2000 team that Ron Vanderlinden created to Ralph Friedman coming in and taking it over and teaching them how not to lose. And that's where I kind of find myself with this team is teaching them how not to lose. And I've got a great uh, experience from being under a guy like Ralph Friesen that I have so much respect for and looking forward to seeing him. So um, with that, I guess the captains for this game, we're going with an all defensive side of captains, uh, Lautez Rogers, Greg Rose, and Jacorian Bennett will serve as our team captains. Um, and then from that, I guess I'll open it up for questions. Viner Forgates makes your company work. We make your company work with hybrid solutions from Microsoft and Nextiva. Mike, working with Talia this season and, and getting the quarterback's confidence, you mentioned about how we played this past Saturday. How, how do you, with the stumbling blocks he's had the last couple of weeks here and there, how do you sort of work with him and, and, and get him going? You know, the irony of it is, and, and you know, usually it's usually the head coach, then the quarterback that usually gets the brunt of a lot of stuff when you're on a three-game losing streak. But, you know, when you look at Ty Lee on Saturday, minus the fumble, which, again, here's a guy trying to create and make a play. I think he was 17 to 27, and he had five drops. And so if you catch the ball five more times, he's 22 of 27. And then he had some big-time throws in the game, uh, made great decisions. And so sometimes I think it's a little unfair, so I'm going to stand up here and protect them like the Papa Bear that – you know, yeah, he's, he's not probably had played his best in the Iowa game, made some mistakes. I thought Ohio State took a, a step forward, and then I thought this game, he's as close to what he's been. But you also have to realize some of the pieces aren't around him, and that's where I think we all, coaches included, have to make sure we understand that we've got to do and call things and execute things based on who's out there and what we can get executed. And I, that's one of the things we've made an emphasis this week. So. I'm going to sit here and say that I think Talia Tonga Noho is playing really good football still. Uh, he has the full support of us, our team, and we were able to show the tape that, you know, I think the kid played a really good game Saturday. Staying with the offense, uh, what do you make of the progress with Marcus Fleming and McDougal getting on the field last week? Yeah, as I said, they're both are talented players. I think Marcus probably is a, a lot further ahead uh, than Day Day. Um, I anticipated Marcus to have the type of game that he had for us uh, because of how he's practiced and presented himself the last couple of weeks. I think with Day Day, there's still some work to be done. He's still a work in progress, and hopefully we can get him to the level that, that we all think he's capable of playing at. But uh, really, really proud of the way Marcus has come along, and it's you know been a, been a process with him. It's a transfer, a young player, new system, uh, new core values for how we do business. but. The best thing about it is that I saw the transition for the last two to three weeks as we started having some of these injuries that I knew he would be prepared to step in and uh, maybe take take on some of the responsibility of creating some big plays for us. Um, we, we look at performance at Alliance scrimmage. I know you've mentioned over and over that it's a years long development process. Um, but what, what type of things do you as a staff try to correct more on a short-term basis to try to resolve some of the run defense type issues we saw? Yeah, when you look at this this game Saturday, um, and I just pointed this out, we have team meetings where, you know, typically you watch the film separate with the offense just seeing what they do, the defense seeing what they do. But one of the things we do with, because of the accountability and the transparency, we do what we call a good, bad, ugly tape where I lead it in front of the team. And one of the things that I was really excited to really point out is that those three interior guys, you know, we're three, four teams. So the nose guard and, you know, Ami, Mo, Greg Rose, Sam, it wasn't the interior part of our defense that was getting chewed up. It was our edges and we didn't do a great job. And again, that's not on the players, it's on us as coaches of the mismatches that they created when they play with extra linemen and 
you know, all of a sudden some of our players that maybe aren't as big or stout to hold up and maintain, you know, this play good run defense is all about gap control. And we lost the C gap, D gap area quite a bit in that game. And to me, that was really, really disappointing because we had two weeks to, to kind of come up with a plan and we knew that we didn't have the Chalmies of the world. And it's my job as a head coach to make sure we put our players in the best possible position to be successful. And I didn't feel like we did that Saturday as far as the run defense part. Coach, uh, the most excruciating play of the game, and I think it had it been converted, might have changed that whole result, was the block field goal that we had five guys around the ball with nobody around them. Uh, first of all, mentally, how do you survive that? But what should have happened there is, I know you practice those situations, or maybe you don't, but what went wrong on that? Because it was unbelievable, you know, to watch. Yeah, we practice a lot of, you know, scoop and score. We have drills for it. Um, first of all, what you got to know about that play, and this, this is why I'm encouraged about this team, we had block right call. And block right meant to, uh, that uh, Jacorian should have been the guy rushing. And if you notice, I called timeout to try to ice the kicker. And in that timeout, uh, Tarheeb Steele said, F that, go block left. I'm going to go get this. And I love when my players do that. I love the confidence they have. So Coach Zook made the call to go block left. And he went and got that. Um, now, as far as the scoop and score part of it, you know, I think you pointed out, you see Jacorian has had a broken finger all year with the hand taped up. And we have drills where you want your knuckles on the ground when you go get it. Uh, the, the part that probably could have been done a little better is that the guys that weren't going to scoop, we teach them to turn around and shield the other guys to give him more time to go get it. But sometimes that's just how luck plays itself out. And uh, luck is where preparation meets opportunity and we didn't take advantage of it. But it was a big play that could have created some momentum, tied the game. And I felt even through the, the first drive of the second half, if we get a stop offensively, we did move the ball some on these guys. And there were some big plays where the explosive plays were starting to happen. But we didn't take advantage of it. That's what football is, though. Things like that happen, and you got to plow through it. Uh, we're back here getting ready for Indiana, and I'm excited for this opportunity. Any other questions for Coach? Mike, you were, you were such a part of the build-up to that 2001 when Ralph came in, and it seemed like everything went right most of the season there. Do you draw any similarities now to the way you brought talent into the program and where you are and how things are going to be so much better like that yeah you know it's a collective deal like i played a role because i had one of the best areas in the country to recruit this dc metro prince george's county area and i made a conscientious effort i remember going to ron vanderland who i got to give a lot of credit to uh he's a guy that was one of the better evaluators of talent because the guy we're honoring like ej henderson was a two-star guy that didn't have a lot of offers and but we had a system for evaluating players and and EJ leaves there our most decorated player so uh, being a part of it, it was a group of coaches that really uh, stuck to the process of what we wanted to do and knew the type of players it would take to win um, and there were a lot of uh, press conferences I'm sure for Ron Vanderland and like I'm having now where you, you start five and two I can remember that year starting five and two and losing a Duke and a heartbreaker here at home slant pass there at the end of the game. I can remember Billy McMullen catching the winning touchdown in the fade there when we played Virginia in the shootout between Lamont Jordan and Thomas Jones. And those are just heartbreaking. And so having been, been through those experiences of building programs, that's why I can sit here and have a lot of confidence that we're, we're ahead of schedule, contrary to what outside the organization may think. And I feel really confident, you know, we're bringing in the right kind of kids and we've got some you know, we got some big time young players in our program and we're still, we're flight, fighting through it. And uh, I think this weekend you'll have a chance to see us really uh, go out and get back to our standard. Mike, you mentioned earlier that Indiana's taken some lumps this season. If you could expand on what concerns you about what they do, especially offensively, because even though they haven't shown a lot of firepower in Big Ten play, they bring a lot of people back. Yeah, to me, it's not really what they do. It's what we do, and I keep saying that. And I know you guys think it's like coach speak, but, you know, when we watch the tape against Minnesota, and I give a lot of credit to P.J. and what they do, but, you know, when they run a two-man route and we drop eight guys in the coverage and they 
complete a pass for 10 to 12 yards because we didn't push through and cover the flat. I don't know how much credit I can give them. And so to me, that's us getting our players to understand what their responsibilities are and to go out and execute them. And, uh, you know, so as far as what Indiana does, I mean, number one, we don't know who their quarterback's going to be. That's always a challenge. Uh, you know, we expect it to be the number zero kid that finished the game last week. But it really doesn't matter who it is. Um, we need to be prepared that what we put on tape, and we say this often that, you know, in baseball, if you can't hit the curveball, guess what you're going to see? You're going to see the curveball. Well, I would expect that with their quarterbacks being banged up, they're going to line up and say, well, let's look and see what Minnesota did. So we better get the things that we haven't been able to correct corrected this week and expect them to come in and try to run the ball down our throat. Um, on the offensive side, we better be able to protect the football and then find a way to generate some explosive plays because they do some good stuff on defense, very multiple. Um, they come from all over the place. Um, the, the scheme on defense is uh, one of those got schemes that you, you better have all of your rules in place to make sure you keep your quarterback protected. You know, I can think back having watched, unfortunately having to watch that Indiana game from last year. Uh, our quarterback didn't play well in that game and threw some, some interceptions that again, as I look back on the tape, uh, that's on me as the head coach and us as coaches and making sure we do things that we can get executed. So we're doing everything we can this week to put a great plan together. And uh, it's gonna be about the Terps beating uh, Indiana and us not beating ourselves. Hey, Coach. What's um, up, Jacob? Doing good. How are you? Great, man. Um, we saw Brandon Jennings get reintroduced to the depth chart this week. Um, are there any few expectations about his playing time after getting a couple snaps in there against Minnesota? Yeah, you know, we'll try to get Brandon in. We rotate guys in there still. You know, Maude has stepped in and done a, a formidable job for us, uh, you know, along with Ruben in the interior. Uh, you saw Kobe McDonald playing some. Uh, Brandon Jennings and then, obviously, uh, Jeremy Sprague is there at the inside linebacker position. but. When you have a guy like Brandon, because as I've said, his type of play or style of play is a heavy-handed style of play that kind of, it's good for teams that like to run the football. And uh, so it's good to have him back. He wasn't 100% in this game, but he's getting close to being. And uh, you'll see his playing time continue to increase as he gets more comfortable uh, being back out there. Last one, Dave. Mike, I know you live in a world where it's just one game at a time, one day at a time, but Halloween is Sunday. If you could go through the Loxley game plan for candy distribution, do you chart the first 15 candy bars? And uh, did you have a parental candy tax with the kids? Well, you know, been on a three game losing streak. I'm a little nervous to let somebody come knock on my door. So uh, <laughs> I'll have to start with that first, that we may just leave it out front and just let them just grab what they want. Um, but no, you know, Obviously, an opportunity. Uh, our players, I love it. You know, we'll do. We'll, we'll, we'll get the Jones Hill house decorated up, and we'll, we'll make sure these guys understand that you know we take care of our players here, and uh, we're excited uh, to have this. Uh, you know, the reunion back. We're excited that you know Coach Friesen is coming back, who has been a great mentor for me, and you know it's great to see guys like Bruce Perry, who's coming back, who was an integral part of that old one team, and. Was an offensive player of the year as a sophomore. Just thinking back to that team, and I see a lot of similarities with this team that we have here right now. And, and um, you know, I just hope this team, a lot like the old one team, is sick and tired of being sick and tired, and uh, put our best foot forward this weekend and get back on the winning track. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks.